Morel takes a center straight away. Huge takedown. Nice little flare on it. Let's have a look at his ground and pound now. Fighters typically strike the body first, trying to lower the hands a little and then go after the head. Morel just trying to wrap Torre up right now. Torre did a good job there to pass the half guard. T-Rex is now pushing his opponent up against the fence. Very smart thing to do with a half guard on that side. No sweeps are no longer possible. That guard of Morel's is wide open right now. T-Rex may actually prefer to have that leg in there as, a, as an anchor of sorts. Yeah, we've seen that's a position that has become quite popular in MMA. Fighters are happy to sit in that half guard or anchor position and land big shots. But right now he needs to do something a little bit more proactive. The mount's available for him. That guard is wide open. Can't quite see what he's working for from this angle. DDA has shown some decent power with a very short wind-up. He's got intense core strength. We may get a look at that fairly soon. I wouldn't be surprised if our referee were to stand this up. Morel just really hanging on, trying to subdue Didier. Not really doing anything proactive. There was a lockdown attempt at a figure four by the bottom player, but it typically in the sport does not have much effect and it did not here. Like you say, Karakturi generating big power from such a short distance. It's the right call from the official, I believe. Right. Morel's going to be acutely aware now that Toure is going to want to take him down, so will this change his game plan? Will he be a little bit gun-shy? Morel does not want to move it forward in a straight line. Oh, tried to spin and attack again. Lightning did not strike twice. That's a big shot to the midsection. That is money in the bank for Morel. Big Morel needs to do something spectacular. Spent a lot of time on his back, getting chipped away at. Surely it would be in his best interest to try and disengage and try and get some strikes off. But Didier just so strong in these close quarter positions. Digging in for the underhook is Morel. There is a little bit of space for him to try and sneak out there. And again, a big par from T-Rex. Lexi, like there he goes. Lexi, like T-Rex, grip those hands, put him just over the kidney. Try and walk his hips forward. <laughs> Good work for Morel to try and get those knees popped into the midsection. That's potentially money in the bank the longer this fight goes. Morel clearly having the upper hand in the clinch. Clearly does not when he's on his back. Big deep breaths here from Didier. It must be said that the heat in here is stifling. Fifty-fifty position right now. Oh, beautiful short elbow. Someone's, someone's gum shave has come out. Referee doing the right thing and waiting for a natural break in the action. The scope for a big knee to the head from Morel. If you can find a little bit of distance, create a little pocket of distance and pop that knee right up the center line, it could be very, very dangerous. He is loving right these the elbows. Temple. Didier needs to get off that fence. Good work for Morel to avoid the takedown. Clinch instigated by Toure. Toure's instincts may have been off a little bit there. He may have gone into that clinch instinctively from the indigenous wrestling that he's a champion of. I think he would have been better off landing a big shot there. I know I've said it before, but the heat in this arena is absolutely stifling. How impactful will that be to our combatants tonight? 
Phil, in the first round, quite a bit. Yeah. In the second and third rounds, quite a bit more. Could be the single <laughs> telling factor in this fight. First round in the books. Heavyweight action here at Hexagon 11, live from North France. Kirk, what do you want to see more of from Morel going into the second round? He's done an excellent job of using his weight. When he pushes his opponent up against the fence, he simply leans on him and it's exhausting. He's not called big for nothing. I, what I don't want to see is hot dog, showboating, hot dogging moves like that, spinning back fist. Highlight reels are great, but there's another side to them. And when you look for a highlight reel move and it doesn't go your way, the fans in this sport are not kind to you. I don't think it's any surprise what Didier is going to come out and try and do. Punch his way into the clinch, try and get the takedown. Maybe time the takedown off the striking of Morel. Let Morel plant his feet, become static, and then slip underneath for the takedown. But still very much all to play for here in our opening bout. Big Morel has done an excellent job of staying in close, leaning on his opponent, and landing nasty, nasty elbows that are very well placed right on the temple, right on the eye orbital. Big deep breaths being taken there by Didier. Oh, huge knee to the, huge knee to the temple, drop Didier. But again, just Didier reverts to type. That's almost muscle memory. Trying to get in on that take time. Those elbows do appear to be legal. And they are nasty in this position. Good separation from Big Morel. Oh, he dropped it. That's it. It's over. What a shot from Anthony Big Morel. Another highlight reel finish. Hexagon MMA 11 starts with a big, big bang from Big Morel. A knockout of Jurassic proportions from Anthony Big Morel. Ah. Two and O oh as a pro, each win via devastating first round knockout. Like I said, do not let looks deceive you. This is a legitimate heavyweight contender here at Hexagon. Big props to the matchmakers here at Hexagon MMA. It's very, very scary when you start with a heavyweight fight because it can end like this or it can end with two big guys hugging each other for 15 minutes. Oh, what a shot there. We see it again. Boom! Completely separates Didier Torre from his senses. It's highly unusual and indicative of the huge power in Anthony Big Morel's body that that shot didn't land on the chin, didn't land on the temple, it actually landed on the skull and still had its effect. Hexagon President Jerome Big giving Morel, Anthony Morel the plaudits. Zero vaincu, 100% finish. Ah! Another That's huge finish and at 31 years old, now 2-0. Anthony Morel's only really just getting started. Devastating finish. I would love to see that again. Because as you say, Kirk, the point of the knee, it wasn't knee on the chin. It was pretty much on the temple. Just destroy the equilibrium of Didier Touré. Let's go! And you can see how much it means to Big Morel. Le vainqueur par KO à la deuxième reprise, Big Anthony Félicitations Anthony. Deuxième combat, deuxième chaos incroyable. Et à chaque fois, c'est sulfureux avec toi. Il hein. n'y bon, a jamais de demi-mesure. Premier combat face à un lutteur sénégalais. Deuxième. Deuxième, pardon. Deuxième combat face à un lutteur sénégalais. On peut dire que ça te réussit pas mal, ce genre d'opposition. Bien sûr, bien sûr. Mais je veux voir autre chose maintenant. Emmenez-moi des pays de l'Est, euh, de vrais lutteurs, euh, même n'importe qui. Je suis prêt à affronter. Merci à tout le monde.
Oui, parce que ce que les gens ignorent peut-être, c'est que tu as aussi été champion dans ta discipline phare, donc la lutte libre, c'est ça Tu as fait de la gréco-romaine également. Donc tu as été champion dans cette discipline. Aujourd'hui, tu as choisi de te reconvertir dans le MMA. Pourquoi ça ben, Parce que j'aime la boxe. Et ben, j'ai eu l'opportunité de, de faire mes débuts euh, ben, avec Zagon MMA, que je remercie, qui m'ont fait confiance pour, euh, pour mon combat pro. Et vous avez vu, je suis lutteur, mais j'adore boxer. Donc euh, si c'est vraiment dur, je ferai de la lutte. Mais pour l'instant, je continuerai sur de la boxe. Il se murmure aussi que tu as été le sparring partner de Cyril Gann. Est-ce que c'est quelque chose qui t'a boosté, dans, peut-être dans ta motivation, qui t'a conforté dans l'idée de te lancer Bien sûr, bien sûr. Avant de signer à Hexagone, euh, j'ai passé, passé un mois et demi sur Paris. Je fais les grosses salles parisiennes. J'ai l'occasion de, de, de m'entraîner avec Cyril. Ça m'a encore plus boosté. Et ben, ça m'a fait remarquer. Maintenant, je suis devant vous. Je remercie l'organisation de, de me faire confiance, vraiment. Et je ne compte pas aller ailleurs tant que je n'ai pas une ceinture. Hein. <rire> Mais alors, qu'est-ce qu'on se dit Est-ce que tu penses que tu as le niveau pour viser le plus haut niveau en MMA également Alors, euh, je vais aller faire attention à ce que je mange déjà. Parce que euh, je n'ai pas les abdos de Cyril Gann. Mais euh, sinon, le reste, je pense avoir le courage. La technique, je vais m'améliorer. Et je ferai tout pour y arriver. Alors, tu viens également de La Réunion. On va en parler. La Réunion, il y a des des petites infrastructures, aujourd'hui vous avez des petits moyens et pourtant, avec le peu de moyens que vous avez, eh bien, vous arrivez à être performant et ça c'est louable. À La Réunion, on est, on est petit, je m'entraîne dans un club de Muay Thai et dans un club de Jiu-Jitsu, le club de Muay Thai de Gérard Mayo et le club de Jiu-Jitsu de, de mon tonton qui est juste à côté de moi. Et, mais on a une solidarité à La Réunion, on est quand même bientôt un million d'habitants donc il y a quand même du monde. Et toutes les portes sont ouvertes dans tous les clubs. Il n'y a pas cette mentalité où on ne fréquente pas d'autres clubs. Là, c'est la réunion contre d'autres nations. Donc tout le monde m'aide. Je les remercie. Les sparring, les cueils qui m'accueillent. C'est grâce à eux aussi que je suis là. On vous souhaite donc une très belle progression à la réunion. Félicitations à toi. Et on te souhaite d'aller vers la ceinture. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup.